So a while back I took a video showing sort of a brief overview of each step in the process of selective laser centering with the Formlabs Fuse 1 and its post-processing equipment. And I'm going to basically do another overview, but this time I'm actually going to do each step and give some insight into what's going on there. And then eventually I'll come through and give more details about each process. So this will be, just be another short overview type of video, but with me actually doing each step. So uh, we have a build that's finished on the Fuse 1 selective laser centering machine. And uh, that finished last night. It's cooled down enough for us to go ahead and take it out and, and start post-processing. First thing we'll need to do is depowder it. So I'll go ahead and get the build chamber out and show you what that, what that looks like. So here's the build. That's the top of the build chamber there. You can see all the, the powders, you know, dry and uh, cooled off and cracking and everything. And I'll put it into the fuse sift machine. Go ahead and plug it in. Normally you plug it in and let it cool down in this machine. It'll read the temperature out and let you know whenever it's ready for you to go ahead and, and handle the parts and whatnot so you don't get burned. Go ahead and put the other build chamber in so that it's ready to print. I do have another uh, print in the queue, but I'm not going to start that right now. Normally I would put that, that build in um, while this one cools, have that one printing while we're post-processing these parts. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and, and get on with the depowdering and kind of do a time lapse to show you uh, what that looks like just as an overview. Okay, so we have the build chamber loaded up and uh, ready to exhume these parts and depowder and uh, sift out that powder so that we can mix it in with version powder and reuse that in the machine. I'll go ahead and get this uh, build chamber or build plate raised up. And that's going to push all of these parts out. This is the powder cake. And that's a whole bunch of parts, finished parts inside of there. So I can go ahead and start moving this over to the sifter. I'll turn this sifter on, it vibrates and uh, filters out the big particles from the small particles. All right, stop this. So that's now filtering that, that powder so we can separate the stuff that we can't use from the stuff that we can use. We'll mix in a certain amount of the good used powder with virgin powder and recycle that. So essentially what, what we'll be doing here, I'll just go ahead and show you with one part. Like let's say, yeah, we'll do this one. So this is a Diana Chaser uh, grip adapter here. And we're basically just gonna get um, the bulk of the powder out, out of it or off of it before we take it over to the next station where it's going to be bead blasted and uh, prepped for dyeing. I'll take a brush this here brush that powder off you don't have to get it super clean just for the purposes of I guess of, of this video I'll I'll clean this one up pretty good get a good look at a finished part before it's blasted obviously you don't want to spend a whole lot of time uh, doing this especially because the next step is going to remove all the powder powder anyway you're really just trying to i guess capture a decent amount of powder uh, to be recycled and then um, if there's any spots you know where it might be difficult for the automated blast machine to get the powder out uh, there's not really any spots like this in this particular grip adapter but uh, a lot of times maybe 
uh, holes uh, or little hidden cavities and whatnot it might struggle with so you can help it out by pushing some of the powder out but uh, yeah with this part i could probably just take it you know a part like this and throw it straight into that into the uh, blast machine if i wanted but uh you know while i have the time i like to uh try to reuse as much of that powder as possible so anyways here you have it can't really see very well this hood the purpose of it is basically to keep you from contaminating the powder and then also uh, it helps with this uh, air filter to direct all the powder that uh, builds up in the air and everything through that filter you're not going to be breathing that in at all so, so essentially this is a part that's ready to go into the blast machine and have that final layer of uh, powder removed and to kind of clean up that surface in preparation for dyeing. So I'll go ahead now and switch over to a time lapse and I'll post process our deep powder all of these parts uh, before we move on to the next station. Okay, so we're all finished depowdering these parts enough to be blasted. There were 31 parts and it took about 25 minutes uh, to depowder all of those. I probably did more, uh, you know, more detailed work than I needed to, to depowder them. Uh, so just to give you an idea of what that looks like per part, how much time I put in uh, to depowder. So the next step is we'll take these parts. I'll probably separate them into, uh, you know, big parts, small parts, and then throw them into the bead blaster and I'll go ahead and, and show you what that looks like. All right, so I have the parts mostly depowdered. I can go ahead and get the blast set up and ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and put these larger parts in there first. Put them inside of this tumbler and that'll rotate. And then we'll just bring the, uh, the head of the bead blaster down into that basket, set our cycle times, get it started, and we can just walk away from it and come back to it later. So this is the bead blaster head here. Um, we can blast it manually if we need to but uh, we can also do the automated blast. I mostly do the automated blasting. If I wanna do the manual blasting, just pull that lever down and turn the head down like so. And then there's a pedal down here that you can uh, operate it, has gloves, put your parts down on the grate in the bottom and blast them manually. But uh, go ahead and turn that into the basket, close this up. The cycle is actually already set to how I want it. Uh, you can control how much pressure uh, it uses to blast it so you you turn the pressure up it'll use more air and it'll blast the parts more aggressively if you blast them too aggressively though uh, yeah, i find that it can not take the dye very well so uh so i have it turned at 45 psi in 20 minutes and i have a rinse cycle where it's going to you know blow air on it uh, i don't know i don't remember if it's ionized or deionized air but anyways it blast air on it to essentially uh, get all the dust and beads off of the parts and the beads get recycled down here and it can uh, passively separate the nylon powder from the bead so the beads last longer which is pretty cool i'm going to go ahead and get that started i have the uh, air compressor hooked up and have an air dryer hooked up to make sure it's shooting uh, dry air out of there and i'll do a little time lapse where you can see what the what it looks like for it to flash these parts automatically Okay, 
so the fuse blast has finished its cycle and we can go ahead and open it up check out the parts move that out of the way see that part that i showed you earlier the diana grip adapter all the holes are cleared the surface finish is nice and even so the next step will be to uh, rinse and wash it with water and then we can take it over to the dye machine. I'm not going to show that process because it's not super interesting. I'm just dumping it into a dye tank where it heats up the water and circulates it with dye and then uh, we'll take it out of there, let it dry and uh, wash it again and it's good to go. So uh, essentially it'll go from you know having that finish to having this finish. This is a Umarex Origin Hemlock Hand Guard. You can see over here, uh, we have this thing rotating. This is the uh, mixture of the uh, powder that we removed from those the last field, mixed with virgin powder. And it's mixing right now so that I can put it into the uh, fuse machine and use it for the next build. So uh, right now we have that next build going uh, because we had enough powder in there already for that. But I'm going to go ahead and add this on top uh, in, inside that hopper and we can just keep it going like that. So, uh, so that's just a quick overview of this process. I'll go into more detail for, with each one and be happy to answer any questions uh, that folks have. So thanks for watching.